Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one rental at a time, back with the one and only Anna Kelly. And we're going to talk about Manny Koshman's five golden rules to succeed in a recession. You ready for this, Anna? I'm ready. Let's do it. So uh, if you don't know who Manny Koshman is, I really suggest you uh, give him a follow. His last name is a little hard to spell, so I'll put it here. It's K-H-O-S-H-B-I-M. Uh, if you are a car guy, you certainly know who Manny is. He's the one with the Bugattis and all the fancy McLarens and all of those things. But I digress. Uh, I really like what Manny's doing, Anna. He is not a content creator pushing fear. He's like, hey, I built my commercial empire in a recession. Uh, we are in one or heading to one. And these are my five golden rules. So I'll go through them quickly. And then you and I can talk about what we think are the right ones. You ready? I'm ready. One, cut the fat. Basically reduce expenses. Two, raise cash right? Or access to cash. Three, do the work, right? What is it your thing? Is it commercial, residential, stocks, whatever? Four, be patient. No need to rush. Recessions are not V-shaped bottoms. And number five, do ne never forget to, money is made or wealth is created by buying when everybody is selling. So those are his five rules. What do you think? I'd give him a five for five. I told you right before we started, I don't know who this person is, to be honest with you. So I don't follow him, but um, I like all five of those rules at this time. Yeah. So you and I have been through a couple of recessions, right? We're we're older than uh, we just have, right? We are we are who we are. <laughs> uh, when you think about how you have dominated and how you're set up to dominate this one, what are one or two of Anna's golden rules? They they could be different than what Manny listed. Sure. I like all of those. I really do. The other two things that I would just kind of throw out there at the top of my head is one you have to know your financial goals, right? You have to know why your financial goals are still important. And if there's a shift in your financial goals for a certain reason, then you need to really focus on making sure that the deals that you do do, he talks about consistency and patience, they have to actually work to fit your financial goals. This is a time when there's a lot of fear. It also creates a lot of uncertainty. So people tend to get squirrel syndrome. They said, maybe I should change what I'm doing. Maybe I should go buy gold. Maybe I should buy oil. Maybe I should buy a commercial real estate. Maybe I should flip a house. They don't know, right? And so people get very easily distracted and just trying to chase yield and don't think enough about what is my primary financial goal. And I'll give you an example, right? If your primary financial goal is you don't have enough income coming in, your primary financial goal should be, I need more income. So don't go invest in things that aren't going to pay you for three years. They have huge upside and risk. If you don't have enough income to survive day to day, focus on deals that bring you income. So that's the first one. Yeah. Uh, the first one I would give you, and again, I've learned this personally, right? So I have a big scar on my back, virtual scar from, from learning this lesson. And that is check your ego at the door, right? When the market pivots, when we go from a growth to a recession, uh, some of you, myself included, were wildly successful. And then the market changed and it bit you in the butt. Some of you still haven't acknowledged that you were lucky. No, mm -hmm. you're not Warren Buffett. You were lucky. So humble yourself, see what's going on, maybe get a little smaller. Don't, this is not the time to go all in uh, because, you know, you did two flips and made some money. Uh, the market has changed. So um, humble yourself would be my first one. Absolutely. It's super important because listen, the last 10 years, we've all looked like rock stars and we've made some really good decisions, right? That have helped us. But people that have made a lot of mistakes still did really well because the economy was expanding. Now the economy is clearly contracting. And so you have to not only be good, but you have to time things right. You have to make wise investment choices, right? So in addition to being patient um, and being humble, I, I'd say two other things. One is don't go it alone. If I could change one thing from the beginning of the last major recession, it's that I got jaded. I met a couple of dishonest people and I thought, forget it. I'm just going to do it my own, on my own. It took me a lot longer to figure it out because I didn't surround myself with wisdom from people that had been there before. And so, you know, this is a time to say, let's surround myself with a network of educated people who have integrity, who have competence, who have experience and continue to learn. So back to being patient, you might have to go a little bit more slowly, but you need to make sure you're really educating yourself on 
the type of investing that you're doing and what happens when markets shift like they are. Um, what kind of risks are there and how do you maybe need to mitigate a little bit some of the things you're doing to take advantage of opportunities, but also to really think about how to mitigate risk. And you do that with the network. Yeah, the last one I will tell you is um, you got to watch your mindset, right? Yeah. And fear is is front and center and it's 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 not going to go away, right? Yeah. You beat that to your point by being around a network of people uh, that you can lean on, right? You could share, you, you can, you could share, you could be vulnerable and they will help you and say, yeah, we've been there. This is what we did that, you know, this, that, the other thing. Yeah. It, this is not a t time to retreat. There will be many wonderful businesses grown here. There will be many wonderful deals done, deals of a lifetime done in a recession. Um, it's not all about price. It's terms. It's, it's just, you know, as Warren Buffett always tells us, right. You, you want to be buying when everybody is selling, uh, we're going to find some people that are swimming naked. Maybe there's an opportunity to pick up some stuff. So it's, um, you know, as somebody who has built the callus to not be afraid and actually is excited now, I do appreciate that not everybody is, uh, has done that. But, you know, fear is real. You have to acknowledge it. But, you know, you've got to move on. This is the time to strike. Absolutely. And, you know, I, I was talking to my mastermind group last week about um, a, an interesting study that I did, which talked about two sides of the brain, the amygdala and the hypothalamus. And one controls fear and emotional response. It's like your fight and flight, uh, fight or flight instincts. And, the, and it stresses your, it puts your entire body, your mind, everything into fight or flight. And the other side is like, let's have hope, let's have calm, let's rationally think through things. What's really interesting is that your brain develops continual neurons and connections that tend to favor one side or the other. So based on how things have gone in the past, if you've had fearful things, you're going to react more fearfully, right? And your blood flow can only go to one side of the brain or the other at the same time. So you have to know what is my default? Am I defaulting into fear? There's uncertainty. I'm afraid. The guy I didn't want to win the election won the election, I'm afraid, right? Inflation goes higher than I thought, I'm afraid. You have to train yourself to say, I'm not going to dwell there and make decisions based on fear. Because if you're making decisions based on fear, they're rarely good de decisions. You have to train yourself to say, I may be afraid, but how can I have hope and courage in the midst of fear to continue to make a wise, rational decision and to keep move forward and not getting paralyzed? And so- in, in recessions and in these market cycles, there's also the cycle of emotions, right? At the height, everyone looks like a rock star. There's fear of missing out. Um, and there's just this irrational exuberance. And as things start to come down, we're like, oh, maybe it's not so good. And then we're a little nervous. And then suddenly we're like panic fear. At that point of panic fear, 70% of us are going to feel that, right? We have to say, are we going to do what everybody else does and react on fear and lose a lot of money or stagnate and miss opportunity? Or are we going to recognize that that same emotion that we want in sellers to make us be able to find a good deal and make money, you know, be greedy when everyone's fearful, we're impacted by those same emotions. And so I had to pull myself out of that wallowing in fear and despair in 2009 when everything wasn't going my way. And it really wasn't until I got that grit and resilience to say, you know what, I'm not going to wallow in this. I have to take action. So I'm going to have courage to continue to move forward in the facing in the face of fear. And and grit and determination is more of an indicator of how you'll succeed through this than how smart you are, how much money you save, you know, all, the patience and all those other things. Grit and determination, resilience and mindset is extremely important. That is, that is awesome. Anna, do me a favor. Where can people find you? Great. You can find me here every week and on my playlist on your channel. Congratulations, by the way, on 10 million views. So exciting. Um, you can you. find me on my website if you're interested in masterminds or coaching at reimom.com and social media at Anna Kelly, REI Mom. Thank you so much. And congrats to your Astros. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>